Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I have some really fun projects for you today. Uh, some really pretty stuff. I'm really excited about how all three of these projects turned out. I actually uh, went fall shopping at Hobby Lobby uh, a few days ago, so if you haven't seen that video, go check it out. Uh, it's a really good one. Hobby Lobby has tons of beautiful fall stuff, but while I was there, I also found the end of summer slash spring aisles where everything was 75% off of like the spring shop and a lot of their summer items. So I got some really neat buys and I wanted to share with you all how I found just some older clearance items that nobody really wanted because it said like flip flops. Uh, on a bucket that I got and it had like the pink summer flamingos on a little sign and I just wanted to show how you can take like um, clearance items or like quality more quality items than Dollar Tree but uh, get them at a very reasonable price and turn them into some beautiful farmhouse decor so honestly these are some of my favorite pieces that I own right now and I love these little makeovers so make sure you stay tuned to see how that I changed everything completely to make it fit into my farmhouse decor Starting on the first project, I picked up this little iced tea lemon pitcher, and I love the beautiful wooden frame on this. It's a nice quality. This originally was $13.99. Like I said, I got it 75% off, so I only paid $3.50 for this, which I thought was a great deal for a wooden frame that is already put together like this. And this is just something I typically wouldn't buy for the image that is in it. Um, I don't have a lot of like sweet tea or anything bright with yellow or these orange tones in there. So I wanted to cover this up. So I'm using some of my White Waverly chalk paint after I tape off all the edges because I did not want to get any paint on my beautiful outside wood piece. I end up having to do two coats of this white paint so I can cover the image. And then I wanted to show you all these brushes. I absolutely love these. I will try to link them down below. I always get questions on brushes, but these are definitely one of my favorites that I own. I've been dreaming so much lately about your face when you're smiling. It's the only thing that saves me. Mm -mm. After I let the two coats of white dry, I'm using some of my Elephant Waverly chalk paint. And I didn't want to do too much on this. I just didn't want the background to be super white. So I'm just dry brushing a tiny, tiny bit across this white wood. That I think you're beautiful. And oh, I can't wait to hold you. Yeah, you pull me up when I'm falling down and I don't know what I would do without you. And then yeah, as you can see, up. without making it too dramatic with dark lines through it, I just added a tiny bit to give it more of a rustic barnwood feel. The next thing I'll be using are these beautiful little wooden words. I picked these up from Hobby Lobby. I was so excited to get to show you all these. These are from the Woodpile brand at Hobby Lobby and they are originally $1.49. But if you wait for them to go on sale on the 40% off or use your coupon, you can get these for less than a dollar. And I just think that it's a great deal on a laser cut, nice, beautiful, swirly word. And these are kind of small, but they are a nice size for less than a dollar. Uh, I know we would be so excited if Dollar Tree came out with little words like this. Um, but they sell these every day at Hobby Lobby in the die cut wood section. So make sure that you do go check that out. They have tons of shapes and words that are perfect for little projects. So I went ahead and took mine outside and I'm going to paint those black just with some really cheap little spray paint. And uh, this made it so simple to get in all those little grooves. I highly recommend uh, spray painting those. And then I am in love with this black and white uh, buffalo check right now. So I wanted to make a beautiful bow for this sign. And I'm just making a super simple bow by, by rolling over the fabric a couple times to create a loop. I do that two times and then cut off enough for the little tails at the bottom. I double knot this all on a jute string and then just fluff the bow up. And it makes a perfect easy little bow.
After all my words were dry, I just laid them out how I wanted them on the sign. I originally centered them, but then I decided after I wanted to add my bow at the top, I pushed them all down so that they were more visible and the bow didn't hide any of the words. But I love how this looks whenever I had it all laid out. Um, I love how the contrast between the natural wood frame and then all of that black and white popping out of there. And I just thought that this matched at my farmhouse perfect, but it will also go really well with my fall and Christmas decor. So I just tried to get my words down as straight as possible. I just eyeballed them. I probably should have measured, but I absolutely love how I, this came together. I definitely think this is my favorite piece that I've made in a very long time. And I think it's just beautiful with my other farmhouse decor. Moving on to my next farmhouse DIY, I picked up this cute little flamingo sign that says days until summer and this was originally $19.99. I also got this 75% off so I ended up paying $5 for this which is a little bit more expensive than the last sign but I still thought it was a really cute idea to make something including the chalkboard that already comes with it and I just love this sign. I, I was worried that I might regret painting over it and maybe I should have saved it for next summer but I wanted to make something that I could leave out all year. My girls are getting old enough to wear um, they don't just scribble all the time anymore. They actually want to write words out. So I thought it would be fun to place little chalkboards around the house that they um, could incorporate some of their little drawings and stuff into. So they love writing on little chalkboard pieces that I have set out. And uh, the first thing I wanted to do is sadly cover up all these little flamingos and those beautiful little leaves uh, with some white Waverly chalk paint. I was trying to be so careful around the little chalkboard um, but it's so easy just to wipe off if you do accidentally touch it with your paintbrush. Where you move, make me blind. You will always be there. There is no doubt in my mind. You will always be Once again, coming in with just a tiny bit of gray paint on my paintbrush, I'm going to go ahead and apply some of this to the edges. I think it makes a huge difference if you actually add some of this paint in between each of the boards so it highlights uh, where they meet at. I think it makes it look so much better like more um, shiplapped wood. And just went ahead and tried to blend this in all over this wood sign. So to decorate this sign, I am using another one of those little wood pile words. This was also one of those uh, 149 that I got 40% off and it says home and then I also picked up a tiny little half windmill and these are actually in the Christmas farmhouse ornament section and you buy them each and this one was $3.99 but you definitely can wait until they start having their Christmas sales or also use a coupon on this to get it a little bit cheaper but I just um, removed that top little hook so it didn't look like an ornament and I put the little home sign under it instead of painting the home black this time i thought it would be fun to mix it up and paint it the dark gray so it went better with the windmill so i'm using some of my elephant color just to try to paint this and like i say i definitely recommend spray painting these if you do have that color on hand just because it made it so much more simpler than trying to get every little groove and curve with this tiny little paintbrush I am very carefully trying to apply the smallest amount of hot glue I can to these tiny little pieces and push them down. This little metal windmill does get hot, so if you do do this, be super careful with that. Um, and then I'm just going to apply a tiny bit of hot glue in between these little letters. It is hard when you don't have a lot of surface area to apply the glue. And then I'm just going to press this down directly on the sign and let that start to cool off. And I'm going to make another very simple little bow to add to the corner of this sign. Be 
After I did complete this project, I was worried about all of this matte um, chalk paint that hadn't been sealed or anything because this is a sign that we definitely will be using and um, touching, especially if we're going to be writing on this and erasing. So I wanted to protect everything around it. And my favorite thing to do that with is this Rust-Oleum two times gloss um, gloss spray paint. And I just picked this up at Walmart. It's just two to three dollars. And I wanted to cover that chalkboard so it did not seal that over and then uh, cover the rest of the frame. I probably should have done that before I added my bow, but it's okay. I just tried to work around that. But I thought this turned out so cute. Definitely something I can set out and we can write on and have so much fun counting down different days, but it's not seasonal so I can keep it out all the time. I know school is quickly approaching, so that is what we have on it right now, but it'll also be fun to count down for Halloween as well as Christmas. And I just thought this turned out so cute and I'm excited to use it. I also picked up one of these metal buckets and this actually said flip flops on it and it was really cute. It was originally $29.99 and I paid $7 for it but it honestly is a large size and I thought this would be so cute to hold little blankets or pumpkins especially uh, this fall or add in some little uh, branches for Christmas. But the first thing I wanted to do is get rid of that flip flops uh, little wording on it. My fingernail polish remover would not remove it and I couldn't scrape it off so I'm just going to try to cover it with some of my uh, galvanized painting techniques. So the first thing that I did was take some of this shiny metallic gray spray paint and I just coated over the flip flops a few times and uh, it definitely looked different so I went ahead and sprayed that all over the bucket. And then uh, I do have a tutorial on this, I will link it down below for how to galvanize things. But I pretty much just want to take an um, old brush where the bristles are all spread out and I just want to blotch on this paint and it doesn't matter if it's thick or there's some places that are thin, I just love how it all comes together and it really camouflages anything that is underneath and it did take care of that little flip flop uh, lettering that it did have underneath and you can't even see what it originally was so I was excited about that. Now this is something that I didn't want to decorate it too much. I just wanted to make it more galvanized and rustic looking so that I can change it up for all of the holidays coming up. I waited until all of my dark gray paint was 100% dry and then I'm just trying to barely take a little bit of this white and try to dab it on. I used the wrong brush. This is actually an angled brush which made it just look like I kind of added polka dots on it and I didn't like this effect so I do end up trading out brushes. Uh, I do like to use the older ones like I say with, that, with the uh, bristles all spread out. It gives it so much more of a pretty uh, effect on there. So uh, like you can see I did trade this brush but it still just exactly wasn't what I wanted but I still do like the outcome of how my bucket turned out. Just styled for this uh, photo, I actually just paired it with a little beautiful little gray and white uh, tassel blanket that I picked up at Five Below, as well as some of this greenery that I got from Walmart. But I love how all of these projects turned out. Like I say, these are definitely some of my favorite pieces that I have in my home right now, and I am so proud to be able to display them. So thank you so much for joining me today. As always, I would love to hear which one of these projects was your favorite. For me, 100% hands down, it was the thankful, grateful, blessed sign. I love that and I'm so excited to get it hanging up on the wall. So thank you all so much for joining me today once again and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye. Make sure you are subscribed. Give this video a big thumbs up. Bye.